started out just uh, out uh, adjacent to the steering platform and this co2 system is meant fire fixed co2 system is fire fighting system is meant for when there is a huge fire inside the engine room and which is not uh, this is which is beyond control actually you cannot extinguish with this small uh, fire fighting system like the by hosing down with the as um, uh, fire fire hoses or many any fire extinguishers etc so when there is a huge fire that time the complete engine room has to be isolated now how it is done is there are uh, the remote on the remote station and in now the latest ship they have the emergency fire station very near to the uh, accommodation or maybe on the uh, the either side of the ship so they are in the poop deck and this and one control is always in the inside the co2 room only now co2 room uh or uh, and to discharge it the the decision is taken by the masters but ultimately execution will be done by the chief engineer if chief engineer is not by any reason if chief engineer is not present that time the next in command next is uh, in charge the second engineer he can also operate but that is only when chief engineer is not available now when there is a, a fire Uh, detected in the engine room the uh, fire alarm is raised actually first of all the general alarm and fire alarm is raised by any remote uh, uh, point or maybe from the engine room and the second moment the captain is informed master is informed that there is a huge fire in the engine room uh, and this can be informed by any duty engineer also if chief engineer is not present there in the engine room that time at that time by time any uh, responsible engineer also can inform to the captain or to the bridge the saying that there is a huge fire in the engine room and it is beyond control so that immediately the fire alarm will be raised and a head count is taken the all engine room will be evacuated and everybody will come out to the master station and there the head count will be taken to make sure that and nobody uh, remains in the engine room so all are safe all are rescued all are uh, outside the engine room that for that as you are aware that uh, master stations are there on the port side or starboard side poop deck so that head count is taken after the head count is taken uh, then we have to approach to the uh, there are set of pilot cylinders you can see in this figure on the top there are two small bottles two small bottles that also contains the co2 they are called as a pilot uh, cylinder bottles so it is it is uh, actually this is located inside the emergency uh, fire station or maybe in some old uh, ships cases it is separately installed uh, uh, just outside the engine room also just where in the engine room entrance now when you uh, open this cabinet door in case of fire the first and foremost thing is the fire alarm will be raised fire alarm in the engine room the very loud fire alarm visual visual and audible alarm will be raised and after raising that alarm the at the same time all the blowers engine room blowers uh, and the ventilators are shut off or electrically the signal is given and it is all shut up all engine room is uh, to isolate the air in intake air inlet to the engine so that fire does not propagates that is the very first step then then to uh, uh, after making sure that nobody their heart count is taken then chief engineer is authorized uh, to operate this and prior to operating this uh, mass uh, uh, cylinder uh, releasing co2 into the engine room you have to make sure that engine is stopped you are all ventilators is closed 
and the quick quick closing wall is closed and um, the, in the sense the engine room should be completely isolated completely isolated in the sense all fire doors must be closed all ventilators must be closed all quick closing valves are closed all purifiers and um, pumps and fuel pumps generators everything is the moment you cut off the fuel wall everything is closed so for that there is a separate panel the grouping of switches are there the group 1 group 2 group 3 like that in group 1 actually group 3 is last is uh, group is uh, for the accommodation fire when there is a accommodation fire there is a group 3 but what group 1 and group 2 are meant specially for the engine room so group 1 switch if you one switch only if you uh, operate uh, the gangs of all pumps are interconnected like fuel pump your purifier room pump you are um, uh, actually the all which is related to the fuel and lube oil those pumps are shut off so that it will make sure the generator will automatically cut off and uh, your main engine if it is running while sailing if it happens the main engine also has to be stopped first and foremost if the main engine and generators all are shut off and immediately the moment the generator is uh, cut off your engine room generator is cut off emergency generator starts that is the location of emergency generator as you are aware it is outside the engine room and uh, you know, on the um, uh, just near to the bridge deck or second deck so emergency generator takes over the power part for the emergency supply now the ab now after the after we make sure that engine room is completely isolated and there is no air intake inlet uh, inside the air going inside the co um, in engine room and then the co2 is released after the captain's permission master's permission so if the captain uh, will uh, uh, give a permission to the chief engineer to release this co2 then co2 now we come to the point that how this co2 is released what is the procedure what is the steps for releasing co2 now this on top there is a box it is cabinet inside the cabinet there are two boxes are there and prior opening this cabinet you have a key uh, outside this thing is that with the, that uh, small hammer type key there you have to break the glass and that key has to be taken out after taking out this the immediate it should be it should happen very really quickly actually you should not take much time for that the so open this cabinet door is open and as i told you the moment you open this door the alarm will ring and engine will be evacuated and the all uh, primary things like blowers and all everything will engine room blowers will be shut off now second thing is you have two pilot valves pilot cylinders those pilot cylinders are Uh, the meaning, the purpose of the both the pilot cylinders are same that they are installed parallelly because uh, if that that means the one other pilot cylinder is like a uh, spare pilot cylinder. If some in some cases, if say one pilot cylinder does not work, the other pilot cylinder will uh, take over. Now, so what happens is you have two sets of valves there. Two sets of you can see the two. Um, Uh, valve levers. So when you operate one valve lever, this will go to the servo cylinder. Actually, in this here they have not shown the servo cylinder. Some some ship they have servo cylinder or some ship there is a auxiliary pilot cylinders inside the CO2 room. But if servo cylinder is there, then servo cylinder uh, have uh, the this gas will uh, CO2 gas will go to the servo cylinder and pressurize the Uh, pressurizes this piston and uh, one plunger uh, arrangement by which the complete uh, you know, the gang of cylinders which is meant for the engine room it is pulled and the the automatically this valves are punctured type actually the cylinder head on top of the cylinder head cylinders all measure to cylinder say suppose if 180 cylinders are designated for the uh, main engine space that is also pre calculated actually as per the engine room volume uh, it is pre designed that so many cylinders will be required for the engine room 
so those cylinders that that has got a one complete gang uh, uh, this thing uh, arrangement pulling arrangement and that will pull and the all the valves all the valves of the cylinders will be punctured and the gas will go common manifold and it will uh, inject to the engine room but this is the general arrangement but there is a time delay arrangement also why the time delay is uh, there's a solid that shot of valve the time delay of 2 second or 3 second about uh, is there so that to make sure that the engine room master valve you can see on the uh, blue line there's a bottom blue line where it is ending there is a master valve that master valve is for the engine room actually the master valve is for the engine room before opening the cylinder puncturing the cylinders co2 cylinder you have to the time delay is given to make sure that master valve is open the master valve to the engine room is open if it is not open the pressure will unnecessarily over pressurize the line and the relief valve may lift so the time delay is given so that this master valve is open and then co2 which is already on the line or that will release and co2 will be injected inside the engine room now there is a relief valve also you can see here these reliefs are raw valves are uh, meant for the uh, if line is pressurized by some mean by some uh, uh, if say suppose co2 room is designed for actually the co2 is meant for cylinder uh, 22 to 35 degree you are supposed to maintain the co2 room temperature always below 35 degree celsius it goes to 35 37 38 also will do but it should not go beyond 35 36 so after 35 36 this co2 may expand and the valve might might burst or anything can happen so in that case this give gas flooded gas goes into the manifold common manifold and it stays here and by any mean if it punctures or something happens the relief valve will lift and this will release the gas to the atmosphere like black black uh, uptake we must have must be seeing that uh, that is the relief valve relief valve in case of over pressurizing line will open and the gas will be released to the atmosphere so this is the general configuration of the co2 system now there are uh, system actually uh, any system in maintaining any system is uh, is very important actually you have to the servicing and maintaining any system or making sure that in the case of emergency in case of fire it really works or not so for that you have to uh, routine routine uh, test you have to carry out that's how it is carried out is you have to check up the line the pressure lines this uh, so for that if it is some line is choked or some uh, passage is not clear so that for that you have to there is a blank one uh, blank uh, flange is given so that blank flange you have to blank the co2 side and from one side you have to inject the compressed air engine room compressed air and make sure that this is uh, the all the openings are op uh, clear and there is no hurdles this is one thing and the pressure gauge also you may be seeing the pressure also you have to make sure the co2 cylinder always has the about 6 kg of pressure 6 bar and uh, the the same uh, pressure is maintained in the pilot cylinders also small pilot cylinders so uh, that's how the functioning of the co2 and the co2 system is uh, very very important on board ship like the fire fixed fire uh, co2 system and some in some ship this co2 system is meant for the cargo holds also so cargo hold for uh, cargo hold there is no actually the remote uh, operation system because cargo hold is itself is a in the very uh, it is uh, away from our uh involvement like cargo hold uh, uh, the, the actually casual chances of casualty is very less you can uh, ask somebody to come up or shout or there is alarm people will come out so it's not critical space like engine room so cargo hold you do not have any remote state you have to go inside the co2 room and manually release the cylinders for cargo hold also uh, 
different different cargo holds has different different volumes so as per those volumes these uh, cylinder head uh, cylinders co2 cylinders are designated so you have to go manually you have to go inside this co2 room and with whatever required uh, pressure or whatever required quantity you need for particular uh, cargo hold you have to go and manually release them this is the uh, general system uh, of the co2 anything if you want to ask us something from my side हेलो हेलो सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर इसका प्रेशर टेस्ट कैसे करते हैं लाइन का प्रेशर टेस्ट प्रेशर टेस्ट देखिए जो ऑन बोर्ड शिप जो प्रेशर टेस्ट होता है वो तो हम लोग प्रेशर टेस्ट ऑन बोर्ड शिप नहीं किया जाता ये ये जो जो भी है इसकी टाइम एक्चुअली जो सीओ टू बॉटल्स के ऊपर जो है एक स्टिकर होता है उसको आप पढ़े तो ये लिखा होगा की दिस इज Uh, pressure tested and this thing in such and such port uh, while dry docking or this thing and it is valid for so and so time so uh, in fact the on board ship you cannot uh, do any pressure testing of the cylinders of course the line as i told you the line pressure test or line uh, if any there is a leakage of line or any nozzle is choked inside the engine room that can be done by the by blanking the co2 uh, side co2 cylinder side and other side is open then so uh, uh, you pressurize air you have to inject into the system and check all the nozzles all the lines everything so that is done if you have any doubt about the cylinder or something you have to report to the uh, company saying that we have problem with the cylinder they will send the shore people these people uh, they will come and attend to it they will replace the cylinder itself by that like that it is प्रेशर ड्रॉप एक्सेप्टेड यू मीन सिलेंडर प्रेशर इज आई डेंट गेट यू repeat your question please actually asking while maintaining like maintenance ka jo ye hota hai uh, time schedule hota hai so us dauran how much pressure drop is acceptable actually uh, pressure drop uh, in the cylinder you mean uh, that is not specified actually if you have any doubt about pressure dropping or something um uh, you have to what i said is you have to report to the company and get it uh, done because this is a fire fighting system you cannot take chance you cannot take any risk because whatever specification is given you have to maintain those speci specified pressure uh, etc as yeah. but, uh, maybe maybe if you have uh, read somewhere how much the percentage of the drop is uh, permissible uh, i may i have to check up again if it, if you there is a like normal extinguisher yes. there is a indication given in the pressure meter which is given in green uh, zone green zone is given so if it is within green zone then it is acceptable so no but in co2 cylinder there such not such arrangement is given i believe there is no such arrangement there whereby you can see the uh, any indicator of green or red i i, I portable hota hai sir ha ji ग्रीन एंड रेड हो इंजिन रूम की वॉल्यूम इंजन रूम का टोटल वॉल्यूम जो है वो कैलकुलेट होता है इट इज प्री कैलकुलेटेड मतलब शिपयार्ड से ये कैलकुलेटेड होके आता है और उस हिसाब से उस वॉल्यूम के हिसाब से जो है ये सीओ टू बॉटल डेजिनेटेड होते हैं जैसे सीओ यदि इंजन रूम बड़ा है तो हो सकता है 180 uh, 180 या 100 200 सिलेंडर्स इज रिक्वायर्ड और इफ इट इज लेस 
maybe the num less number of cylinders are required that all pre calculated that is we have we don't have to go into deep we have to we are our concern as a seller as a this thing engine room staff or the deck staff only to know how many cylinders and which all cylinders are designated for the uh, engine room and how and how many cylinders are designated for the cargo holds respectively that's all flooding requirement abhi marpol ki we will just check and oh. it's going to be flooded with co2 so we have lot of nozzles distributed all over the engine room from right from bottom platform to the top platform we have lot of co2 nozzles and these are co2 sounding alarms you know you have visual and audible alarms in the c uh, indicating that co2 is being flooded inside the engine room and we have a co2 room which has main co2 bottles the number of co2 bottles totally depends on the gross volume of the engine room and let's forget about the calculation we will deal that in a separate video so let's now concentrate only on the operation and we have the control station or the valve release cabinet or the control cabinet simply so in order to flood co2 inside the engine room as a matter of fact the master mustering should be done in the master station head count order from the master and then with all confirmations with respect to your company policy the master will give orders to the chief engineer to release the co2 and it is the chief engineer who has to release the co2 into the engine room and let's see what are the components inside the valve control station this valve control station can be located at different places but definitely outside the space to be protected here the protected space is considered to be the engine room so you got to have definitely outside the engine room otherwise you can't operate in the event of fire inside the engine room so there are three or many other possibilities i'll deal with three such possibilities where these has to be located the control station so most of the ships you have two basic places where the control stations are located one is the fire control station and other is the co2 room itself and the third is just outside the engine room just at the entrance of engine room in fact so the release cabinet has two pilot cylinders and it is enclosed inside a cabinet which has a door once the door is open it gives audible and visual alarms and also it might trip some ventilation fans and stop some fuel pumps it varies depending upon the ship but usually it gives it must give a definitely audible and visual alarm and it should stop the ventilation fans so we have two bottles out of which we are going to use always only one bottle one bottle is considered to be a spare we are not going to use both the bottles so there is a valve over here we got to open this and then there are two valves one valve if you follow the green line goes and opens the main co2 bottle valve mechanism the other one if you follow the blue line goes and opens the main distribution valve which is also inside the co2 room so once i open this valve the co2 from the bottle comes and stands over here as the chief engineer opens both the valves simultaneously the green line the co2 goes through the time delay unit the time delay unit produces a time delay of 20 to 30 seconds depending upon the system or the manufacturer and it's not present in all kind of ships so it's not mandatory it's just an optional stuff and this blue line goes to the main distribution valve for the engine room so the time delay unit can be either electrical or a simple empty bottle which creates the time delay of 20 to 30 seconds just the time needed to fill up the bottle the reason is the reason why it's kept as a empty bottle is the co2 from the pilot bottle 
takes time to fill up the empty bottle. Thus, this is how the time delay is created. And electronically, we have a solenoid wall and a timer mechanism, which after, after let's say 20 seconds time delay, it opens the solenoid and thus the CO2 goes and opens the main cylinder unit. So, as the chief engineer opens, the CO2 opens the main distribution valve. This also has a limit switch. So this limit switch gives an indication that the main distribution valve is opened. And the, after the time delay, the main CO2 bottles with corresponding to the engine room has also been opened. Thus, the CO2 passes through the non-return valve. And this non-return valve, remember that each cylinder outlet is having a non-return valve. It, the CO2 released passes through the non-return valve, so reaches so the main me, manifold, uh, let me, and through the let, distribution valve, it goes. Excuse me. Let me, let me elaborate this. Let me elaborate this. Actually, uh, this time delay is mainly maintained. Time delay of 20 to 30 seconds with the help of solenoid valve, or in some old ship they have the empty cylinders so that it uh, takes time to fill up and. Mm, but the Apart from this, the other purpose of this thing is there is a main distributor valve, master valve that you consider as master valve to the engine room. It should be actually when chief engineer operates, he'll operate both the in the uh, pilot uh, pilot's uh, cylinder cabinet, both the valves together. But first of all, he has to we have to make sure that this distributor valve is open. The, gray, yellow, the blue line, blue line you can see, that is for the distributor to the engine room. To make sure prior, before opening this cylinder, um, CO2 flooding cylinder into the common manifold, you have to make sure that this valve is open before. Once the line, this line is clear, then for that reason, this 20 second or 30 second delay is given actually. To ensure that this valve is open, as he said, this uh, on the distributor wall also there is a limit switch. That limit switch will uh, operate, give signal to this solenoid wall, and this solenoid will wall will delay for 20 seconds so that the uh, CO2 gas is already in the line through the common manifold, and then it is ready to go inside the engine. That is also one of the purpose. And second is the CO2 which goes to the common manifold. From the common manifold, there is a bifurcation, small ball bifurcation, small tube, uh, sort of pipes are uh, uh, connected to the cylinder head mountings, cylinder head mountings where this, this is the puncturing arrangement is there on top of it. There's a puncturing arrangement. Once this pressure acts on to this puncturing arrangement, this will one by one, the, all the walls on top of the cylinders are punctured with the pressure and it is open. So that is also the purpose of this thing. Once the uh, CO2 is flooded into this and after opening one cylinder or two cylinders, again, gas added up into, into the common manifold. Then from common manifold, there's a small pilot um, uh, connection is given to the cylinder head mounting like it is shown here. So that also helps to puncture the wall and open the cylinder head and uh, the, in series, all the uh, cylinder valves are one by one, it is open and mm, common manifold is filled up with the CO2, then goes to the engine room. Yeah, please continue. Goes to the engine room through, gets distributed to various nozzles to various platforms. So, as you all know, there is a requirement that 85% of the CO2 has to be released within two minutes of operation. So that's the requirement. So all the pipings and the nozzles and the diameter, everything has been calculated so that the requirement has been met. The details of the calculation, pipe diameter, the length and uh, 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 mm. thickness of the pipe, etc. You can One find minute, it in the uh, CO2 manual. Can you stop the idea? Clearly please? explained. When so that's not scope of this video. Can you stop the idea? The requirement, uh, require, what requirement is saying is 85% of the CO2, uh, the area of the engine room must be uh, covered in two minutes. Requirement is not that it will be released in two minutes. 
लेट मी करेक्ट यू पहले हमारा ये क्वेश्चन था कि भाई कितनी फायर होगी इन चीजों में तब सीओ टू का जो है ऑपरेशन होगा नहीं दैट इज नॉट करेक्ट करेक्शन ये मतलब इसने जो बोला रिक्वायरमेंट तो 85 परसेंट जो है वो दो मिनट के अंदर जो है अंदर इंजन रूम में फ्लडिंग होना चाहिए दैट इज द रिक्वायरमेंट यू अंडरस्टूड नो ये अभी इंजन रूम में कितना फायर है नो बडी विल एक्सेस नो बडी विल कैन मतलब कैलकुलेट कि भाई इतना 45 परसेंट फायर हो गया 50 परसेंट फायर हो गया इमरजेंसी में नो बडी इज गोइंग टू एसेस दो थिंग तो फायर है इंजन रूम में और इट इज यू थिंक दैट it is going to spread all over because if there is a fire major fire in the engine room it takes no time to spread because there is a fume already uh, um, inside the engine room oil fumes other fumes it takes no time to spread all over the engine room so that is not our criteria ki kitna fire hoga tabhi co2 release karenge nahi co2 release 85% jo hai 2 minute ke andar cover karna chahiye wo hamara requirement for that ki pipeline ki dia kitni hai flare hai ki nahi hai no jo उसकी इतनी कैपेसिटी है कि नहीं वो वो कैलकुलेशन उसका कैलकुलेशन सिलेंडर उसके लिए सफिशिएंट है कि नहीं दैट इज द रिक्वायरमेंट यस यू एंड लेट्स नो कंसंट्रेट ऑन द मेन मैनिफोल्ड यू हैव अ ब्लैंक यू डेफिनेटली हैव टू हैव अ ब्लैंक ओवर हियर सो दैट फॉर एनी मेंटेनेंस पर्पस यू कैन आइसोलेट द सीओ2 बॉटल सेक्शन यू कैन ब्लैंक इट एंड देन कैरी आउट मेंटेनेंस ऑन दिस एरिया and you have an uh, a valve over here through which you can connect air either mm. from the engine room or from the shore depending whether you're on dry dock or not and on the manifold you also have a pressure gauge indicating whether the line is pressurized or not and one of the main components on the manifold is the relief valve let's say you have released the co2 and for some reason the main manifold has uh, the distribution valve has not opened uh, the line has to be protected against uh, in other damage so uh, you know like the relief valve will lift and the co2 will go outside the co2 room uh, through the free uh, to the free atmosphere you know and the recent generation ships the modern ships have a pressure switch over here this pressure switch whenever there is a small uh, leak or some pressure in the line it detects the pressure and gives an alarm it might be either the co2 leak alarm or the co2 release alarm depending on uh, the classification you know the pressure switch can be either calibrated uh, let's say the pressure 1 to 10 bar as leak alarm and after 10 bar it is release alarm it depends on the uh, the automation system of a ship and after that you uh, have the distribution valve which is operated through a piston and this piston i should push up the valve opens up and then the co2 goes to the engine room and that's it with the simple system now let's concentrate on the actual system which is present on board a ship so this is one such actual system which i had on board a ship as i said we would consider the protected space or the space to be protected as engine room which is isolated and at the protected space entrance we have the valve control station in my last ship i had so we can operate release the co2 just outside the engine room and conventional in a conventional way you have the valve control station in the co2 room and one at the fire control station so so from three places you can flood co2 inside the engine room let's now concentrate on uh, the fire control station the valve control uh, uh section you know so we have a key inside the break glass type which is sealed just break the glass take out the key open the cabinet you can't open it just like that you got to put the key and open the cabinet and as i said once you open the cabinet in my last ship we had the co2 release alarm and the vent fans will stop and uh, I'm going to open one of these bottles and there is a pressure gauge here. Once I open the bottle, I get a pressure indication over here and just follow the pink line. It goes to the two valves and after that it waits for the chief engineer to operate it. And once the chief engineer operates both these valves after confirming that the vent fans have stopped, quick closing valves are closed and the dampers are shut etc etc 
So after th these two valves have been operated, let's follow the green line. The green line goes and opens the main valve, main distribution valve to the engine room. And as you see here, you have a check valve over here, or uh, a non-return valve over here. So the gas from the pilot cylinder can pass only this way. It can't return this way. And it cannot also go to the other valve control stations. You have a non-return valve over here. So it opens the main distribution valve. Similarly, the other line, let's trace the blue line, it goes through a check valve or non-return valve through a time delay unit to open the main CO2 bottles in the CO2 room. And as the CO2 is released, follow the red line and the main distribution valve is open now and it goes, just goes out and then the space, the engine room space is getting flooded. Now you have a similar arrangement in the CO2 room and also at the engine room entrance. Let's assume if I want to operate from the engine room entrance. I have to take out the key by breaking the glass, open the cabinet. I have a similar mechanism over here which is not shown. The CO2 alarm will sound, the vent fans will stop and I have to uh, shut the quick closing valve. Remember when you're operating from the engine room entrance, somebody has to go to the fire station or the emergency station from where you have to shut the quick closing valves and the emergency stops of blowers, pumps, dampers, everything has to be done. Or if this arrangement is there, you must be capable of having shutting the quick closing valves, everything just outside the engine room. All arrangements must be nearby. So. I open the cabinet, confirm everything is stopped and everything is perfect for release of CO2, mustering, order from the captain, the chief engineer operates these two valves. I open the bottle over here, pressure is indicated. Let's follow the green line now. It goes through the check valve non-return and it goes and opens the main distribution valve. And the blue line, it goes through the check valve or a non-return valve, goes to the main uh, uh, through the time delay unit and of course to the CO2 bottles inside the CO2 room and thus the CO2 gets released and through the red line through the distribution valve it goes to the engine room and gets released. So this is how the CO2 system is being operated.